Hello, and welcome to the St. Peter's University service in memory of those who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. I am Father Andrew Downing, the Vice President for Mission and Ministry at the University, and I invite you to take a moment with me and with members of the university community to remember, to mourn, perhaps to pray, and to look for hope even as the pandemic continues. It's now over a year since the virus responsible for COVID-19 was first identified and a global pandemic declared. In that time, the disease has spread to every continent, every country of the world, and it has wrought a bitter harvest. Over 500,000 people in this country have lost their lives, and millions around the world have died. Still more have been sickened by the virus, and all of us have known the fear of whether we would be the next to catch it. And sadly, many of us grieve for those who in fact did. It's a disease that touches everyone without exception. We at St. Peter's have been touched by the pandemic too. Among the members of the St. Peter's family, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends of the university, and members of their families, the virus has touched us, and some the virus has taken from us in death. And so we pause to remember those who have died, those whom we knew, those whom we didn't know and now never will. Let us not let the light of their lives be forgotten. Because the pandemic affects us all, our responses to it are as varied as we are, as diverse as the global community, which suffers its effects. And so it is also at St. Peter's. United in our grief, we express our hearts and our hope for tomorrow with diverse voices. Sharing a common loss, we look for consolation from diverse sources. The word of another, be it from God, or from one perhaps more practiced in grief, may speak to us. And in speaking to us, it may give us help to face this moment, name some part of what we are feeling, even shed light on what lies beyond our loss. And so I invite you now to take a moment and listen to the words of some members of the St. Peter's community as they share some of what has given them hope in these days. Theirs are but a few of the many voices here at St. Peter's, but perhaps you'll hear something in them that speaks to you. Perhaps you'll find some comfort in them. Perhaps you will then be able, by your own words, to offer comfort to someone else. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see through many dangers toils and and snares I have already come till 
His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me. Sometimes loss and suffering leave us without words. Perhaps that is why for centuries the Jewish people have turned to the ancient poetry of Psalms to express our fear as well as our hopes and to seek comfort and solace and renewal. And it is with that spirit that I offer the words of Psalm 121. A song for ascending the temple steps. I lift my eyes to the mountain. From where will my help come? My help is from God, who creates heaven and earth. He does not let your foot slip. Your guard does not slumber. He neither slumbers nor sleeps, the guardian of Israel. God is your protector. God is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. God will protect you from all harm. He will protect your soul. God will guard your going and your coming, now and always. The word of encouragement that I'll be sharing today is inspired by two verses found in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. It reads as follows. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Verse 14 is where I truly draw my comfort from. This simple line reminds me of who I am and to whom I belong. The God that I serve reminds me of that I am protected, I am loved, provided for, and that he will never give me more than I can handle. Amidst tough times where I cannot necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel, this verse gives me hope. I think there's a beauty in the location of where this verse comes from. In this part of Exodus chapter 14, the Israelites were just free from Egypt and delivered from hurt and harm. Shortly in verses 15 and 16, Moses is instructed by God to raise up his staff and part the Red Sea so that they may all cross. The angel of God was guiding them in the form of a cloud and moved from a leading position, moving them forward, to protecting them from the rear. I've always interpreted this to mean that God wanted the Israelites not to dwell on where they have been, but to focus on where they're going. God did all the work. He fought for them and in their stillness and asked them to do a basic command, which was to walk forward. I find that this short excerpt helps me realign my focus and re-energize my spirit. I hope it can do the same for you too. The poem I have selected is Turn Again to Life by Mary Lee Hall a Connecticut lawyer, suffragist, philanthropist, and poet who lived from 1843 to 1927. It is written from the perspective of a speaker who, in the event of their own passing from life to death, urges their loved one not to be forever consumed by grief, but rather to channel the pain of loss into acts of good. I believe that such pain must be felt as it comes to us, not just endured, but accepted, but also that we honor and show our love for those whom we have lost, 
when we help others on their behalf so that their mark is not only left within us but on the world which they and we have made better. Turn again to life. If I should die and leave you here a while, be not like others sore undone who keep long vigils by the silent dust and weep. For my sake, turn again to life and smile nerving thy heart and trembling hand to do something to comfort weaker hearts than thine. Complete these dear unfinished tasks of mine, and I, perchance, may therein comfort you. I'm going to say a short prayer in honor of those who we've lost due to COVID-19. Allahumma gfirullahu warhamhu, wa'afihi wa'afu anhu, wa'akrim nuzula, wa wasi'a munkhala, wa'gzilhu bil ma'i wa thalji wal barak, wa nakihi minal khataya kama naqaita thawbu al-abiyadu min al-danas, wa abdilhu dara khayra min dari, wa ahlan khayra min ahli, wa zawjan khayra min zawji, wa adukhilhu jannah, wa'addu min adhab al-kabri, wa'adhab al-nar. And that translates to, O oh Allah, forgive them, have mercy on them, give them strength, and pardon them. Be generous to them and cause their entrance to be wide and wash them with water, hail, and snow. Cleanse them of their transgressions as a white cloth is cleansed of its stains. Give them an abode better than their homes, families better than their families, spouses better than their spouses. Take them to paradise and protect them of the punishment of the grave and the punishment of the hereafter. Christians grieve as people with great hope because we know that Jesus Christ has conquered death and the grave because he is the resurrection and the life. The following passage from the Gospel of John highlights that before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, in the conversation of the Lord with Martha of Bethany, she confronts Jesus then accepts and receives his reassurance and makes a profound profession of faith. This profession is grounded in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of the body at the end of the age, an event that is our ultimate hope as well. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary sat in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives, believes in me, shall never die. Do you believe this? Still our faith is cause enough to 
last remaining breath, let us sing Alleluia. to face grief and the sadness and uncertainty that go along with it with others than to face it alone. And it's easier to look for hope when you look for it with others. We may do these things in different ways at St. Peter's, but let us do them together. For now, we may need to remain distant to keep one another and our communities safe but let us not grow apart. So whenever, wherever it is that you have paused in this moment, let us remember those who have died, and let us also remember one another. Even when we cannot be together or be with those we have lost, our prayers and our thoughts for one another keep us whole. They keep us with those whose memory we hold. I thank you for taking this moment with me. May you stay safe, and may God bless us all. Amen. <laughs>